Hey everyone, and welcome to another CTF Reddit video. Today we're going to be talking about the story challenge from Progyon CTF. Uh, this was more of a puzzle challenge than a pwn challenge. Um, there's going to be multiple steps uh, that we need to bypass to get the flag, but overall, pretty fun challenge. Um, it says the author wants to hear a story from a lucky person. We're given a netcat port and a download file. Um, so if we run it, let's do make Ubuntu. We'll jump into an Ubuntu box and we'll run the binary. It says, welcome to the game. Guess four numbers in a row to pass to the next level. Enter your guess. We guess one and we made the wrong guess. Um, so it looks like we're gonna have to do some reversing. So let's open up Ghidra. Cool, now that Ghidra's open, we can take a look. Um, there's a couple functions to find. Uh, we can see there's a main function, a vuln function, and then a hard set winner, easy set winner, calculate description and random check. Um, let's take a look at strings and just see if the flag is defined within here. So we'll open up strings, we'll search for flag, and we can see there's a flag.txt. So that looks interesting. Let's see where that's being used. So we'll click on the flag uh, string, we'll go to xrefs, and we'll, we can see it's defined in two different functions. This easy set winner is opening the flag, and it says you're a good storyteller, and it's also defined in hard set winner. Um, so there's two different functions that will return us the flag, and the only two the only difference between these two functions, as I go back and forth between them, the easy set winner and hard set winner, is this IVAR has to be equal. Um, so I'm just going to work backwards and see what it takes to get flag.txt to open and display instead of starting at main like I normally do. So to get this true, we probably want to call the easy set winner, would be my guess. Um, so if we look at this calculate description function, uh, it's doing a little loop. I'm going to press I to rename. Uh, it's going to loop, so this is the length for our array check. This looks like it's doing a little character array, so local c looks like a sum variable. So it's going to do sum is equal to sum plus character. I'm going to do apple l to rename a variable type. I'm going to change this to a car star. So this is just a sum function. Um, so we can see sum is equal to sum plus whatever value is in this array. So calculate description, all it's doing is calculating the, uh, the sum um, of all the ASCII characters. So if the sum is equal to this, it will print out the flag. Okay, so in hard, we need it to be equal to this very large value. And this very large value is 12401240 oh, um, in decimal. Or in easy, we need it to be equal to 1240. Oh. Cool, so we can see what calls easy set winner. And we can see from the xrefs that there's nothing that actually calls easy set winner. Um, that's a bummer. If we take a look at hard set winner, uh, hard set winner, we'll see that it's called from the vuln function. So let's check that out. So we have a vuln function, it's doing a printf, write a few words about the game. Uh, it's going to do a scanf, this is our in buffer. Uh, we can see that the in buffer is only 72 bytes, whereas it's reading 100 bytes, so we have a buffer overflow, that's interesting. Um, if we have a buffer overflow, we should probably check the protections that are on the binary. So let's do a check sec. Check sec says there's no canary. That's good, so we could do buffer overflows. Uh, pi is enabled, so position independent executable. We will need an info leak if we're going to jump somewhere or do something. NX is enabled, so we're not going to be writing shell code. And full railroad is enabled, so we're not going to be overwriting the global offset table. Hmm. Um, so write a few words about the game. It's going to read in 100 bytes uh, into the in buffer. So then give me two lucky numbers. They both must be less than 1,000. So we'll call this in num1. And we'll call this one in num2. If in num1 is less than 1,000, it's going to do some weird sort of function pointer stuff. We'll come back to that. Otherwise, it's going to say put var is equal to check. And if we double click check, you can see it's light blue, which means it's defined in the data section. We can see this is where hard set winner is set. So this function is setting check, which is a function pointer in the data section, equal to pu var1. So we'll call this the winner func. It's going to check the length of the string buffer. So this is the in buffer we gave it. So we're allowed to type in 100 characters. It's going to calculate the, the length of it and then pass it to those winner functions. So there was the hard winner function and the easy winner function. So uh, now it kind of makes sense why we want to call the easy win function because there's no way that we would be able to sum over to whatever that was, many millions in just 100 characters. Um, we definitely, we could make it to 1,000 so we could sum to 1,000, so like ASCII characters go from 0 to like 128 or something like that. Um, so if we needed to get to 1,000, we just need 100 characters of 10, for example, or you know 20 and 40 or something like that. 
Um, so it's going to do the string lang, and then it's going to copy that function. So it looks like um, this check function isn't correct. We need it to call the easy one, and we have a function pointer. So it would make sense that somewhere in this line of code here, we're going to be able to overwrite this check function. Um, if we try to understand what this is doing, um, so we're given two numbers, num1 and num2. Num1 has to be less than 1,000. Um, it's going to do fun. And if we look at fun, uh, it's just some undefined variable, interesting, uh, in the data section. Fun plus some offset that we get to give it is equal to fun plus the offset plus a random number. So a strange code, but essentially what this gives us is one arbitrary write into the data segment. Um, and it just has to be less than 1,000. So what we could use this gadget for is we could calculate the offset between fun and check, set that offset to in num1. There's this times 4 we need to be careful about. But we set that offset to in num1. And then we get to provide what we want the new relative value to be. So instead of having check point to hard set winner, we could use this line of code so that check is equal to easy set winner. Cool, OK. So we know what we need to do here. And then when we do write a few words about the game, we just need to make sure that the sum of all the characters, if we add up their ASCII values, is equal to, I think it's 1,240. Um, OK, so we can do both of those. Uh, next, take another step back. Let's see who's calling Voln. It's calling the, the main function. That's good. So in the main function, it's going to do a srand. So it's going to seed the random number generator with the current time divided by ox3c. Uh, OX3C is 60, so I guess uh, we just need to be correct to the minute. Uh, it makes that easy. It says, welcome to the game, guess four numbers in a row. Uh, and that's going to do call into random check. So it looks like uh, we're just going to call this counter. So we need to get the output of RAND four times in a row. So also, really not too bad to do. So I think we have a game plan at this point. We need to seed, we need to call the program and set seed on a local version at the same time so that the random number generators match. We need to ask for four random numbers. We need to send that to the program. Then once we've done that, we get to execute into the Voln function. In the Voln function, we need to supply a story that has an ASCII sum of 1,240. And then we need to calculate the offsets such that we can overwrite the check function pointer so that it points into the easy flag function. So here's the solve script. Um, we're going to use C types to load in libc uh, .so Um We need this because Python's random number generator isn't the same as libc's random number generator. So we're going to use this Python binding to call out to the libc version of random. And so that way we can make sure we get the correct random number raters. Uh, this is a very nifty tool. Um, whenever you have a reversing challenge that uses uh, C's srand and C's get random, uh, highly recommend using this. Um, we're going to use pwn tools as we always use. Uh, let's first let's run it locally. So like I said, we're going to use that clib. The th let me make this a little bit bigger. Um, and so it's going to take get the current time according to libc, and then it's going to do that c divided by oxc3, so 60, and we're going to seed uh, libc. Um, we're going to set up some contexting, and then we're going to ask uh, the binary. It's going to send us enter your guess. And every time, we're just going to send it the next uh, result from RAND. And that'll bypass the first check. In the next check, it says write a few words about the game. Um, we had to calculate different offsets. So to calculate these offsets, uh, if we go back to the Voln function, um, so this was uh, it was saying insert two numbers. The first number is going to be the offset from fun. What we can do is we can take fun's address, which is uh, here. So if we double click it, it'll take us to here. So it is at uh, 104040. Let's open up Python real quick. So this was uh, fun is equal to this. Oh, this is in hex. And we want uh, the offset to check. So then if we call check, it's right here. And we said check is equal to this. Oops, didn't copy. Copy, copy. And so then we can do fun minus check. And we can see it's at an offset of 48. Um, it does a weird divide by four thing. So we just divide by four manually, and we get 12. And so that's how we get the first one. Uh, if you look at the direction, you can see it's actually going upwards. So we have to do a minus 12. 
Um, the next thing we need to do is winner funk offset. So this is we need to calculate the, the difference between the fun winner and or sorry the hard winner and the easy winner function. And you can find this by right now this this check pointer is currently pointing to hard set winner. So if you calculate this, uh, basically you're just going to copy out this value, so 1014b4, and then you're going to figure out what the offset is to the easy win function, which is right here. So this would be 1013e1. You just subtract those two values like we just did, and you'll get a value of minus 21. We also need to send that story that has a total ASCII value of 1240. Um, for that, I just went through a couple different characters, and I just divided some random values until I saw one that divided well. And so I guess I found that these divided well. So if we do 1240 divided by 31, uh, we can see it divides equally into 40. So character of 40 is this parenthesis character. So if we send 31 parentheses, our story will add up to the correct value of 1240. So we can run the binary. We'll do python3 solve.py. And we get your good storyteller. Here's the flag and winner. So we can try running this on remote. Um, we'll comment this out, comment this, and run the solve script, python3, solve.py. It's connecting to remote. We're sending our random numberators. We sent the story. We sent our byte offsets, and at the very end, we get the flag. Um, so, all in all, fun little puzzle challenge. Uh, thanks. See you at the next CTF. Cheers.